day. This is, the, this is he thrived on it. Uh, I think they call it sadism today. <laughs> well, when you say you got, finally got kicked out of Vincent, did you physically get kicked out? Yes. What happened? Well, I had taken a Spanish test from Brother Reed, who was a little old Irish. Uh, oh, it's almost like a leprechaun. You know, I had taken a Spanish test from him. He left the room, and I know I passed that test because I copied every single answer off the guy in front of me, Steve McMahon. <laughs> I copied every single question. <laughs> and anyway, when it came time to get the results of the test, I got a, I flunked it. He knew that I never passed that test, and he flunked me. And I said, brother, I said, I know I passed that test. He says, you did not fail the test. I says, well, I want to see my paper. He says, I destroyed your paper. I destroyed your paper, and if you're going to get tough about it, get the hell out of here, he says. You're fired. You're fired from me class. I grabbed him by the back of the collar, and I shook him like a, a terrier all the way down to the, mer to the principal's office, his was Brother Murtaugh at the time. And I shaken him all the way into the office, and Murtaugh spotted me coming, and he says, Get your filthy hands off of him. Step the hell out of me. I was scared of Murtaugh anyway. desk after me, right over the desk he had me by the scruff of the neck of the seat of the pants, and he ran me all the way from the office door to the end of the stairway, and he let me go. And boy, I went from uh, I went from one story down to the next without touching a stair. And oh, I thought I broke my legs. And he says, and don't you ever show your face around here again. Oh, God, that man was mad at me. So anyway, I went down to be What'd your dad say about that? You know, my dad was dead. Oh, yeah. This was this. He, dad died when I was 15. What did my mother say? Yeah. She never got the story. She got all the biggest lie ever I ever told. <laughs> <laughs> she she'd, she'd give me a shot. Oh yeah, she knew that I'd get thrown out. So she, what, what what was your now? What were your mother's name? My mother's name was Hannah Ethel Henderson. Mother was 
deaf in one ear, totally deaf in one ear, and she had about 10% of the hearing left in the other ear. But she got through the years. She was deaf ever since she was a kid, since she was a teenager. And she had uh, measles or something to uh, claim her, her hearing. <laughs> when she, she could read lips like you wouldn't believe. So anyway, these people were standing at the bar, a guy and his wife, and they were really giving my dad the business, you know, really doing a number on him, you know, verbally. And she looked uh, down spotted what this guy was talking about. And instead of minding her own business, she decided she was going to get the last word in here. So she just proceeded right down to the end of the bar and started berating this guy. Really, boy, I mean, she was doing a tap dance on him like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, she really was reading the right act. And at the end of this, she was going to be very smart. And she tells the story on herself, you know. This is what made it so funny to me. But anyway, at the end of uh, berating this guy, she turned on her heel and was going to walk away. She turned on her heel and left the biggest part she'd ever let in her life. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, you could hear that. She says, even I could hear that. <laughs> she, uh, she was always telling us. She never was, uh, she never was uh, afraid of telling a story on herself. Well, now, she, she, she didn't have any skills when your dad died. You know? How old was she, do you think? Was she was 37 when my dad died. The only thing she was skilled at was changing diapers and fixing meals for four kids. So when Dad died, she had to go to business college to learn something. And while she was up there, she she was taking the comptometer. And this was the, the machine of the day, you know. This was the thing that was doing the work that the, the Internet does now, practically. And uh, there was a fellow that was uh, president of the college at the time. I think his name was Rice. I can't remember offhand though, but he had a very high-pitched voice. Every day he would come through the different various classes and he'd call out, Can I get anyone any help today? You know, and it got to the point where every time she uh, he'd come near her and she was expecting him, she, she'd jump. And uh, this one day he came through and she was, uh, he was, he was a little bit late and she was bracing and bracing and bracing, waiting for him to call out, you know. And finally the door opened and he called out, Anybody here need any help? And she shit her pants. <laughs> <laughs> and she tells she would tell that story to anyone and <laughs> howl at herself, you know. God, she could laugh at herself. She, she just never took herself that seriously. Well, how was it now? Her mom was Grandma Graf, so why did Grandma Graf have a different name from Henderson? Did she get married again? She married again. She'd been married five times. Oh, yeah, she was married first to Archie Henderson. Then she was married to a guy named Adams. Then she was married to, uh, I don't remember, but the last guy she was married to was Jack Graf, so she became a natural Grandma Graf. And she lived down uh, by the end of the park, or by the end of the yeah. What was she it? ran the, she was the super in the Reynolds McDowell block. The building was torn down now. That was on the north side of the street uh, of where the Emma Mine was. <coughs> and uh, that building, of course, was, they used to uh, get a lot of prostitutes in there. I mean, not carrying on business, or at least not that they were aware of, but that's where they lived, and they would work over in Venus Alley or wherever, uh, over the Cabbage Patch, or that's on the other side of Wyoming Street, but anyway, uh, she had friends of all descriptions, you know, she, my grandmother was, uh, she was never a, a judgmental person, I don't care what what the person was. If they needed something, he'd, she'd feed them. I never went to down to her in my life that she, I mean, she she never had anything. She was just, uh, if, if a person was considered destitute, her name was Grandma Graf. She never had a pot to piss in. Was she Mormon? No. No, she was, uh, oh, 
Well, she may have been at one time, but she wasn't. Uh, she wasn't into any kind of religiosity. Did she? Did you stay with her? I stayed her for. I stayed with her probably off and on for four years. And as a result of that, I I was able to gain the distinction of being her favorite grandson. <laughs> And I used to lord this over my brothers, his dad, my brother Bill, even my younger brother Dan, you know. He, he knew that I was, I was really in Grandma Graf's uh, favor. And I used to resent it when another one of the family, Carl, uh, Carl Henderson, or Bobby Henderson, I mean, my cousin, when he started giving my grandmother's favor, after I started going to marry, you don't go and see your grandmother. 